Despite a rainy and snowy winter out west, Lake Powell and Lake Mead, the reservoirs that provide water for 40 million Americans, are at record low levels due to the ongoing mega drought. Arizona is set to lose over 20 percent of its Colorado River water allotment this year alone. As Stephanie Sy reports, that's leaving communities across the state scrambling to find alternatives. Karen Nabity built her dream house in the Rio Verde foothills, an unincorporated area outside Phoenix with gorgeous mountain views, lower taxes, and no paved roads. So we're collecting rainwater off the roof, and this is the water we're using to flush our toilets. There's also no municipal water supply. The lucky residents have wells that are still yielding water. Nabity has for years paid haulers to bring water from the closest city, Scottsdale, every six weeks, storing it in an underground tank. We got water before Christmas time, and we still are have like 70% of our water in the tank. Okay, and you've been, yep. and you think it'll be another two or three months before yep. you would need to refill the tank? Yeah, because we're being really conservative. On January 1st, the city of Scottsdale cut them off. We have over a thousand people that are without a source of water for their homes right now. And that's just absurd that, that we're having to live like we're camping in our homes. We have two calamities, the mega drought and we have the calamity created by state legislature which permitted dry lot subdivisions. They're building homes with no water. Scottsdale Mayor David Ortega says he made the decision to protect his own constituents in a time of severe, persistent drought. This is why the noise from Rio Verde was so minuscule compared to what I deal with every day. And the other mayors deal with, of Phoenix, Mesa, and so forth. So it is a race. Scottsdale's population of 250,000 relies on the Colorado River for the majority of its water, and the mayor is preparing for the federal government to cut up to 40 percent of the city's current allotment in the next year. The entire state of Arizona and Scottsdale in particular are going to have to go on a water diet. The Colorado River is in crisis. We're talking about water not running in the Colorado River potentially uh, below Lake Powell, which is the Grand Canyon. Sarah Porter, the director of the Kyle Center for Water Policy at Arizona State University, sums up the problem. We're in the most serious situation we've ever been in, and it's really, truly serious. We're seeing, you know, hotter and drier conditions persistently in the upper Rockies where the water that flows in the Colorado River comes from. Also, we have the problem of overallocation and, you know, a fully developed use by, by all the different entitlement holders. The Bureau of Reclamation, which in 2021 made its first declaration of a Colorado River shortage, is refereeing the water battles in the West, forcing states to come up with a plan to reduce water use to avoid the catastrophic collapse of the whole system. It's too difficult in a few short months to get to another you know, multi-state, bi-national agreement. Um, I think federal action is more likely. We asked them, has your well gone dry? And over 50 people said yes. Said yes, okay. Mm -hmm. The troubles Rio Verde Foothills residents face show how quickly cooperation can turn to conflict. And the Colorado River isn't the only pain point. Years of urban development on the outskirts of Phoenix have depleted groundwater. So we now have two groundwater basins where the state is saying there's not enough groundwater for any more development that depends on groundwater. One of those basins feeds the city of Buckeye. 35 miles west of Phoenix, it's a rapidly expanding city with a current population of more than 100,000. In recent years, the city of Buckeye has been flooded with developers, but a report released early this year by Arizona's Department of Water Resources found that the city may not have enough water to support its planned growth. They're spot on with uh, the idea that if, if we continue to just uh, grow off of groundwater without replenishing the water in the basin and bringing in new water resources, that we'll have problems in the future. 
Like the Scottsdale mayor, Buckeye Mayor Eric Orsborne is on a race to find more water supplies. He says the current supply is enough to continue to grow Buckeye for two decades. And the house right behind But me some is. residents are getting nervous. Kathy Kucharski moved to Buckeye in 2021. I blindly said people are not going to keep building homes and building homes when there isn't any water. What scares me about that are the developers that are developing all of this, have they done their due diligence to make sure there's a hundred year water supply like people claim they're supposed to be? As in other parts of the West, urban growth is competing with agriculture for the shrinking water supply in Arizona. Kaywood Farms in Pinal County has had a year of plentiful rain, but the last two summers were brutal. They didn't receive their usual allotment of water from the nearby Gila River due to drought, forcing them to shut down production entirely. When we go up and around the corner, there's a little gray Nancy house. Kaywood, a third generation farmer, says they've had to pivot to make ends meet. Farm tours have brought in some new revenue. Agriculture has been in this area since who knows when. It's been here for so many years. And you know, you're, you're sitting there and it's snowing wherever you live and you're eating a salad. Guess what? It came out of Arizona. Some farmers in Arizona have already sold their land. Others have taken up what are called buy and dry offers to leave their fields unplanted, thereby giving up their water. Nancy wants to keep farming. Growing food and feed, she says, should take priority over urban development. Because agriculture is freedom, agriculture is food safety. ASU Sarah Porter says that Arizona's farmers and municipalities are taking the steps needed to allow for continued growth. It's a tough point and nobody likes it. There's lots of fighting and and finger pointing and name calling. But um, the, the problem that we're really facing is a very solvable problem. The solutions, Porter says, include what Arizona's big cities are already doing, upcycling water, reclaiming it, conserving it, and moving it to where it's really needed. Whether that includes the Rio Verde foothills where Karen Nabity is using buckets flush of rainwater to flush her toilet remains in question. What does the future look like for you here? I don't know. I am, I'm the, the glass is half full of water. <laughs> and um, for me, I feel like we will end up with a solution, but um, I wish that we could get the politicians to stop playing politics and let's talk about water and just get this done. But it's not done. The politicians have still not agreed on a plan to get water to the Rio Verde foothills. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Stephanie Sy.